Hey guys, Dan Giles here, and I wanted to go through a few of my steps that I do of doing a make ready in a vacant apartment, getting it ready for somebody to move in. And the first thing I do is have my trusty little notepad and a pen. And, you know, let me take you with me as I kind of walk you around this apartment. Not only what I do is I'll come in and at, right at the front door, I'll go ahead and start scanning my walls up and down all the way around that wall and walk the unit throughout to make sure that everything is like it's supposed to be. If I find an issue, say, with that outlet, I'll go ahead and write it down on my sheet here to change that outlet or a cover or whatever it needs, cable outlet, and then come scan the wall again. I don't have any issues. When I get to the switches here for the lights and the fan and the fan itself, you know, I'm turning these on, making sure my light comes on, and then I'll come up here, make sure my fan turns on, make sure that I'm getting all my speeds, that's the low, then I'll click it again to off, there. Yeah, you can see me now. You know, so each room I go through and scan every wall for any issues on that particular wall. If I do find an issue, write it down. And then when I'm done with the whole apartment walking through it, then I'll go down to the shop, collect all my parts. And as you can see, I've got everything kind of staged to where I'm ready to go ahead and start installing some stuff. So then what I do as I'm installing these parts, I take my list and say the stove needed drip pans, I can go ahead and line that off. And every time I do a project, I line off that item. And then at the end of the process, go through my list to make sure I've got everything checked and done. And pretty much that's it. Now some apartments are gonna be easier than others, some are going to be a nightmare. This one, fortunately for me, it's not going to be that bad. I just got a couple of things to install, a couple of little projects to do. We do take some stainless steel cleaner and we polish up our stainless steel sink and actually use that same cleaner to kind of give a little shine to our countertops. It's called Sheila Shine. If you're interested in this product, I'll put a link in it below. In a little short video I just did, I, I made reference to how these blinds, if you've got them facing down where the sun is reflecting on the floor, if your apartment stays vacant for any length of time and with the sun coming in and out on that flooring, it's going gonna, it's gonna to cause your carpet to fade in that area. So like I said in my little short video, make sure that you're always turning these blinds in the up position so that when the sun shines through them, you want it to shine up and not down onto your floors. That's a pretty good idea to do that too, especially in the winter time, whenever you, you have these windows that sweat on the inside because of the heat that's inside the apartment. Well, if your blinds are down, facing down, the air from the vents, it's not gonna be able to get in there to that window to help to keep them dry. You may not always be able to keep them dry, but at least turning your shades in the up-down position is going to allow you to get some more air to those windows. Multiple purposes for leaving your blinds in the up position and not in the down position. But just a little tip for you there. Excuse the lighting in this bathroom, but uh, these incandescent bulbs that are still in this light fixture kind of give everything this yellowish tint. But I am in the bathroom and one of the things that I want to do is to Make sure that the toilet is flushing like it's supposed to. Make sure the toilet seat's not wobbling. Make sure the toilet seat's in good shape. If there's any scuffs or marks on the toilet seat, go ahead and replace it. Your new resident's gonna appreciate that because trust me, they'll call you if there's an issue with that toilet seat. That's kind of a personal thing. No job's complete till the paperwork's done. One of the things we do on a turn is we add toilet paper to every bathroom. It's still in that protective paper wrapping. That's a, kind of a neat little touch. 
just something that kind of adds to your selling feature of your apartment. In the middle of all that moving, they might need to go. Well, having some tissue in here is a good little thing that, you know, doesn't cost a whole lot, but it's a nice little feature to, to add to your apartment turn. One of the things that I like to do when I'm finished with a turn on an apartment, the, one of the last features, well, I'd say one of the last two features, because there's actually two things you can do. But for us, you know, we've got some pretty nice carpet in here. You've been walking around on it, trampling it. If you've already had the carpet cleaned, after you're done with everything you've got to do, they make a carpet rake that it doesn't take a whole lot to come in here and just kind of rake over the carpet, knock down all your little footprints, make it look like it's freshly cleaned. When that resident walks in for the first time, they've got a carpet that's nice and fluffy looking. And, you know, that's a first impression that you're never going to get back, so you might as well make it a good one. And I'm over in the closet, which a lot of people like walk-in closets, and they're nice because they have shelving, you know, along both sides, and ours actually has a shoe rack here. You want to come into the closet make sure that all your shelves are sturdy. Make sure nothing is pulled out of the walls. Again, we've got an incandescent bulb in this light fixture, so it's given this yellowish tint. I'm sorry about that. But yeah, make sure all your shelves are solid. Last thing you want to do is have somebody move in, they, they grab a bunch of stuff, they put it on the shelves, and everything just collapses because nothing is secured like it's supposed to be. Luckily, we're good in this one. Closet done. This is my water heater closet. It's inside of the apartment, so everything is still kind of clean and nice in here. When you come to your water heater closet, make sure that your covers are on the front of your water heater. Make sure all the screws that hold that are in place. The last thing you want is for somebody to stick their hand into a 240 volt circuit because you didn't take the time to make sure the covers were on. And then now we're at the air conditioning unit. This is our indoor air handler. And you want to make sure that this bad boy that it's all covered. Make sure all your screws are in your panels. Make sure that you don't have a whole lot of dust build up around this. It really looks nice when they open this door. And when they open that up, they can look at a nice clean air handler. And make sure that you've got your filter. Replace that on your turn. And we like to leave an extra filter in here. It just kind of gives the resident some incentives to change these on a regular basis. So if you leave them an extra one, they pretty much will do it themselves from then on. Of course, we do quarterly, so, you know, it's going to get changed regardless, but you know how a disposable filter is. It's really only good for about 30 days, so you want that resident to change it on a regular basis. So leaving that extra filter for them, like I said, it gives them an incentive to just go ahead and replace it. So now I'm in the kitchen and I want to make sure that everything in my kitchen is in good shape. I already know that I need to put some drip pans on this stove. That's part of the staging stuff that I have here. So I have that ready to go. But you want to make sure that you have all your items in your refrigerator, your ice bucket. One of the things I like to do is to turn off the ice maker. You want the resident to turn that on when they move in. That way their ice is fresh for them. It's not ice that's been sitting in there you know, a couple of days, a couple of weeks, however long that unit is vacant. You don't want that old nasty ice going to a new resident. So let the resident turn the ice makers on. Go ahead and check your refrigerator section. Make sure all your drawers are in good shape. There's one that's cracked on ours. I'll have to replace that. And then something else I like to do is while I'm working in the unit, I like to go ahead and turn on the dishwasher. That way while I'm working in here, I can listen to the dishwasher run. I can hear it go through each cycle that it's supposed to go through. And it also helps, helps to freshen it up and to make it clean on the inside. But you don't know how long that dishwasher's been sitting. So it is nice to go ahead and run it while you're working. That way you can hear it running. You know when you leave, the dishwasher's working like it's supposed to. Right now I'm in the laundry room and one of the things we do to kind of offset some issues with our plumbing here on the property 
so we don't have broken lines. We supply washer hoses. So what we'll do is hook these hoses to the, the washer hookup section here and tighten it, make sure it's good and tight. And what that does is alleviates the residents from hooking to our water lines and over cranking these, these little fittings to the point where they break our water lines. And we've had a few of those happen, so to kind of curb that, we decided to go ahead and invest a little bit of money. I mean, I think it's like six bucks for a good stainless steel set of washer hoses. And uh, we supply them. We put them on here, we tighten them up. When a resident moves in with a washing machine, all they got to do is hook one end to their machine and turn the water on. They don't have to worry about tightening these up. If you've got this problem, this is a simple fix. We went from probably three or four a month to three or four a year. I mean, you can't stop at all, but you can definitely curb it. So when you get your washer lines hooked up, just set them over in the drain. It's quick and out of the way. If you really want to set yourself apart, now this is a small detail that not a whole lot of people are gonna notice, but there are some people that will, and it also, is a good way to show your attention to detail. You see how all these screws are facing up and down? Now they're not perfect, but they're pretty close. And this is a little attention to detail that kind of sets you apart from anybody else doing this kind of work. It might take you three minutes to go through the whole apartment and make sure all your screws are tight. And then when you do that, you make sure they're all facing the same direction. You know, it's like I said, it's a small detail that nobody maybe will see, but there may be people out there who do, and you've just made a big difference. Okay, you just saw how nice the countertops and the sink looks here in the kitchen. I think that's a really nice look, you know, and it's a really nice touch. So that when your new resident walks in the door and they look over into their kitchen, it's got a nice shine to everything in there. It's kind of welcoming. And like I said, I'll leave a link in the description area below for the Sheila Shine. It's a really good product. I've been using it for 30 years. So it's been around for a long time too. It's really good on stainless steel. I did rub some on this hood. It's actually a stainless steel polish and it works really good on stainless steel. But it does good on countertops as you can see. That's a nice little sheen. I don't put it on too thick. And it really does a good job on your sinks. It gives them a nice little reflective shine. Now it doesn't last forever. The first couple times they put water in that sink, it's gonna go away. But you know, that's fine. As long as that first impression, like I said, that you're not gonna get in a second chance at that first impression. So make it a good one right off the bat. So anyway, hey, we're done with this apartment. Got all my parts in place. Everything is looking good. It smells good in here now because that Sheila Shine's got a good smell to it. And I'm just gonna let that dishwasher run. I think it's a good idea to let it go ahead and run through the cycle. It's doing everything it's supposed to do, so it's good to go. So that's it, guys. Just turned an apartment that quick. All the parts and everything, checked them off my list. I'm good to go. Last thing that I wanted to do in here was to rekey my locks. I did that already. So the locks are ready. I've already done all the keys for the resident, the keys that they're going to get. So we're good to go. So we can call this a wrap. Hey, this is Dan Giles. I'll see you in the next video.